Warning, the following video contains spoilers for Resident Evil 1, 2, 3, and 4. These games are best experienced blind and I highly recommend playing them before watching this video. Lastly, the opinions stated are entirely my own. With all of that out of the way, please enjoy. So, if you've seen my Silent Hill 2 video, you already know that I'm not a huge fan of Resident Evil 4. I think I've beaten this game now like 3 or 4 times and struggle to understand why I've done so. I've spoken with friends, listened to a ton of opinions online, and watched multiple video essays from passionate fans explaining why this is the best Resident Evil. I think each playthrough was me looking for something that I just couldn't appreciate. My initial reservations with this game were with the non-existent survival horror gameplay, the new camera perspective was a step back, the intricate level design was gone, the interesting risk reward gameplay loop from the original trilogy was absent. This game isn't scary for 95% of its runtime, and this game entirely overstays its welcome. Some of these elements coalesce to create Capcom's groundbreaking survival horror formula in 1996. I've spoken about these elements at length in my RE1 remake and RE2 remake videos respectively, so feel free to check them out if you're curious. Frustrated that these elements were gone, I, ignorantly, said the game was bad because all these core design elements were missing. Nevertheless, there are two fundamental issues with my criticism here. Calling a game bad simply because it doesn't fit my expectations is an incredibly dumb critique, and this impetus is antithetical to my belief that developers and artists should be able to try new things. Complaining that RE4 is nothing like the original trilogy is like saying Battlefield is bad because it's not Call of Duty. These games, fundamentally, are trying to accomplish different things and should be judged accordingly. Artists aren't machines and have desires to try new things or return to franchises that they're passionate about. Forcing developers or any artist in that regard to release the same game annually is the fastest way to creatively burn them out. If creatives are exhausted and want to try something new, we should judge it as such and not call it bad simply because it's different. With this fresh, new, and probably obvious mindset, I decided to try Resident Evil 4 as an action horror game, and I'm still very divided. I think I understand why people like the game, but Personally, I think too much was lost in transition. The purpose of this video is for me to document my journey with RE4. I want to cover how my initial disdain evolves into apathy to the eventual hatred I foster for this game today. Because of this game's divisive nature, this video will have a very different structure compared to my previous videos. After briefly covering the development history and the presentation of this game, this video will be divided into two parts. What I liked about Resident Evil 4 and what I really can't stand about Resident Evil 4. And towards the end, I will briefly touch on the RE4 remake. Make. Lastly, I want to make something very clear about this video and every video that I make. The opinions in this video are entirely my own thoughts. Resident Evil 4 is, to many, one of the greatest games ever made. There's a ton of fan art, fan theories, mods, video essays, love for the characters, and so much more online. If this is your favorite Resident Evil game and you think this is the peak of the series, that's great and I'm happy for you. My opinion, <laughs> I mean, let's be honest, my opinion means nothing in the grand scheme of things and I'm just happy that people are passionate about something. I also recorded my entire playthrough live on my Twitch channel, so link in the description for everybody that's curious about catching the show live. With all of that out of the way, let's explore the the world of action horror and talk about Resident Evil 4. Alright, let's just be perfectly honest with each other. This isn't your first time watching a Resident Evil 4 video essay. This game has been discussed a ton online and there are several articles detailing its development history. In an attempt to respect everyone's time, let's quickly discuss how people felt about the Resident Evil games before 2005 and touch on the development history. Resident Evil was in a strange place in 2002. The mainline games that all used Capcom's patented survival horror design at the time and fans were clamoring for something new. While the original Resident Evil remake is celebrated today, it's important important to remember that people were exhausted due to the lack of gameplay innovation between titles. Fast forward to 2002 and Nintendo announces the Capcom 5, a joint venture between Capcom and Nintendo, where Capcom would produce 5 exclusive titles for the GameCube. Resident Evil 1 and 0 weren't part of the Capcom 5, but they were GameCube exclusives for over a decade. The original remake was critically praised while commercially underperforming, and 0 received mixed reviews. With neither of these games living up to Capcom's commercial expectations, I imagine Shinji Mikami, RE4's creative director at the time, felt a ton of pressure to deliver something remarkable with Resident Evil. Evil 4. Reflecting on fan expectations 22 years later, it's hard to wrap our minds around how people really felt about the series. In 2024, we have YouTube videos, Twitter, Reddit threads, and other avenues to gauge the general consensus of an IP. I'm sure there were forums or AIM messages from fans talking about these games back in the day, but the size of the community and how ubiquitous we are today makes it easier to understand how the community is actually feeling. I bring this up because I think it's important to say that I'm speculating here and could be wrong about how people felt at the time. 
Anyways, Shinji Mikami, the Resident Evil 4 director, certainly had his work cut out for him. I'm sure he read reviews and was aware of Remake and Zero sales figures as well. Capcom placed a lot of pressure on Mikami and the team to succeed with this game. It's been reported that Resident Evil, the video game series, would have ended if RE4 didn't meet Capcom's expectations. Like, can you imagine if Resident Evil 4 failed and Capcom only uses franchise to make movies? And before you ask, no, I'm not talking about the movies on this channel. They're guilty pleasures and really entertaining though, so I highly recommend watching them. Getting back on topic, Capcom's pressure and their internal mishandling of RE4 led to what was probably one of the team's most hellish development cycles. There are reports of several scripts and numerous builds, including a castle, hallucination, a zombie, and another version of the game before delivering the final product. Like I said earlier, there are a ton of videos covering this game's very troubled development that are worth watching if you're curious. A recurring issue I found across multiple articles was that many of the technical problems were a byproduct of the GameCube's hardware at the time. Capcom, who was always known for pushing graphical fidelity in their games, wanted Resident Evil 4 to obviously look great, and while the Hallucination Castle versions probably look better, the physics, lighting, fog, detailed models, and all the 3D rendered assets were just too demanding for the GameCube. Nevertheless, the final version of Resident Evil 4 was still very pretty. Talking about the visuals of RE4 is honestly quite strange. This game objectively looks worse than Remake and Zero, but the game is much more technically impressive with a great art direction. As we all know, Remake and Zero were able to achieve their graphical fidelity through leveraging pre-rendered backgrounds while the console's resources were dedicated to enemies and character models. This resulted in Capcom creating these incredibly photorealistic graphics that will continue to age like wine. With that said, however, Resident Evil 4, while not as pretty, sure, is a much more technically impressive and legitimate graphical leap from its predecessors. Where Remake achieved its graphical fidelity through leveraging pre-rendered backgrounds, RE4 achieved its graphical fidelity through rendering everything in 3 D. By abandoning fixed camera angles and placing the camera behind Leon, players can now inspect enemies, their surroundings, and see the realistic proportions of these models. RE4's models and general art style go for a much more realistic aesthetic. The previous games went for this aesthetic as well, but seeing characters look like actual people helps with believability and makes things feel more grounded which is such a strange thing to praise about Resident Evil. Another thing that's really impressive about RE4 is the scope of the game. When talking about scope, I imagine many of you think I'm referring to this game's length, but I'm specifically referring to the presentation and size of stages. When looking at the first major encounter in the village, there are a bunch of homes to enter, ladders to climb, windows to jump through, weapons to find, and a fairly large arena to navigate. Before RE4, none of the other games had this many enemies, assets, or points of interest to interact with, and the size of this arena serves as a microcosm of what you can expect throughout this game. This is what I meant by RE4 is a more technically impressive game than its predecessors. The art direction, character models, firearm models, reload animations, and 3D rendered world have held up very well as of writing the script. With the development and graphics out of the way, let's finally address that title and talk about my divisive relationship with this game. I don't think this can be overstated enough because it's genuinely unbelievable, but the evolution of the core gameplay from survival horror to action horror was jaw-dropping. The original trilogy found you solving puzzles, exploring intricate levels, Levels, clearing paths, creating unique risk ward scenarios through limiting inventory space, had occasional boss fights, and eventually shift into a game that you'd speedrun. 1999's Resident Evil 3 probably changed this formula most since Capcom introduced the quick dodge, access to even more ammo compared to the first two games, branching narrative decisions, and more changes to give the game a more action focus. RE4, conversely, abandoned almost all of this. RE4 introduced side quests, mini games, enemies dropping ammo, QTEs or quick time events, third person precision aiming, a ton of weapon variety, vastly improved bosses, a groundbreaking camera perspective, and mostly linear level design. Seamlessly transitioning into an action game with a genre-defining camera, popularizing QTs, and creating this new engaging gameplay loop is nothing short of remarkable. Most long-running franchises today are scared to take risks with their gameplay. Minor additions and refinements to your core gameplay is one thing, but entirely changing genres is something you do when you're desperate or when your publisher forces you to. Effortlessly changing genres, sticking the landing, and creating a game whose DNA can be found in many modern action games was a stunning accomplishment at the time. One of the admittedly divisive ramifications of this game existence is that it was the progenitor of QTEs. QTEs, in the modern gaming landscape at least, are traditionally looked down upon, but their impact
contract in 2005 cannot be, and I'm so sorry to sound like a broken record, overstated. Between the late 90s and early 2000s, narratives in video games were becoming more and more prevalent. Games like Final Fantasy X, Metal Gear Solid 1, and other franchises, but mostly Metal Gear Solid, increased the relevance of narratives in games. However, everyone wasn't exactly receptive to this. Longer cutscenes commonly found players putting their controller down while scenes played out. While this was okay if the narrative and plot were engaging, these long cutscenes failed to leverage the interactive nature of video games. Now, just to be clear, I don't hate long cutscenes. I actually really like them for narratives, but I do understand complaints that people have about very long cutscenes. In an attempt to directly address these issues, the team introduced QTEs to keep players engaged by adding a level of agency to cutscenes, and honestly, the impetus behind these inclusions is genius. I can't imagine how many players in 2005 died during cutscenes after putting their controllers down. This must have been a breath of fresh air at the time when cutscenes and games were just getting longer and longer. Adding these, like I said earlier, keeps players engaged and makes us directly responsible for progressing the story outside of simply reaching a cutscene. The other beauty of QTEs is they dramatically enhance boss fights as well. In my RE2 remake video, I said Resident Evil bosses are a byproduct of rudimentary controls. However, RE4, being a more action-focused game, has offensive and defensive actions tied to QTEs. The bosses in particular are drastically improved with the addition of QTEs. There are several moments throughout the game where your reactions can prevent you from taking damage. This makes boss fights much more interesting when compared to the original trilogy. When you combine enemies dropping ammo and the weapon variety with QTEs throughout the game, RE4 feels much more dynamic to play when compared to its predecessors. So you're probably asking yourself why I'm spending this much time talking about QTEs. Well, I really wanted to stress just how genius of an idea these were and how well they were executed. I'm mostly cool with them since it was 2005 and it's one of the games that really popularized this, but we'll revisit this later because I do have some problems with QTEs in this game. Another thing I really appreciate this game for doing was expanding the world of Resident Evil. The first game takes place in a haunting mansion as we uncover Umbrella's conspiracy, while the sequels take place in Raccoon City. The original trilogy had this quaintness to it. Each game felt self-contained while being connected and gradually building or refining its predecessor's foundations. When thinking of the originals, sure, Umbrella had criminal ambitions to take over the world, but they never actually achieved them. They felt like a cartel with larger-than-life ambitions, the US government caught wind of their nefarious behavior, and decided blowing up Raccoon was the best way to contain the outbreak. The events of the original trilogy focused on telling the story of one city leaving the world alone. So fast forward to 2005 when RE4 is released, and I'm sure longtime fans were probably surprised to see the game take place in Europe. Seeing a small village in Spain being overrun by Las Placas with a cult leader isn't what I was expecting, and to my surprise, Ada and Wesker were in pursuit of this parasite. Seeing the remnants of Umbrella interfering with Sadler's plans while Leon is trying to rescue Ashley shows just how big the world of Resident Evil actually was. Having the story simply take place outside of the US creates so many questions and really makes the RE universe, especially at the time of 4's release, that much more captivating. It made me wonder how Asia, the Middle East, South America, and other regions of the world were or will be impacted in the future. I know I haven't talked much about RE's story or world building in my previous videos, but I don't think people realize just how much a change of setting and moving away from zombies, of course, allowed Capcom to take the series in an entirely new direction for better or for worse. Regardless of where the series went, there's no doubt in my mind that fans were excited to see where the story goes, especially if the original cast evolved as much as Leon did. Seeing Leon develop from a timid officer surviving a zombie outbreak to a charming, confident, suplex-throwing machine was pretty cool and made sense with all of his training. Jill received a bit of this in RE3, but the time jump between 2 to 4 really provided Leon time to breathe, reflect, and develop on really just what happened on Raccoon. It's completely understandable why Leon is the most popular RE character after after playing RE4, and with that, unfortunately, I've run out of positive things to say about this game, so let's transition into the stuff I wasn't crazy about, starting with the, and I quote, new and improved gameplay loop. Before getting into it, I'd like to remind everyone that if you're enjoying this video, a subscription and a like would go a far way in helping the channel grow. Thanks for your support and back to the video. All right, earlier I praised RE4's core design philosophy for its seamless transition from survival horror to action horror, but this game doesn't feel like Resident Evil anymore. Gone is the intricate level design. Gone are the terrifying environments. Gone are the multi-layered decisions players make before picking up an item or planning routes. And what are they replaced with? An arcadey action horror game where enemies constantly drop items, striking specific areas of the body causes QTE prompts, and a plethora of side quests with hordes of mostly boring enemies. When combining this with a trader that upgrades your weapons and exchanges items for money, RE4 is clearly just an action game. 
After players get used to the controls and where to shoot enemies, they'll be doing suplexes, backflips, kicking everything in the face, playing through an on-rail shooting segment, and much, much more. All of these design choices contribute to one of the most controversial opinions I probably have, which is action horror does not exist. And before you click off this video, just please give me a few seconds to elaborate. Action games provide players with a suite of arms or weapons to fight off whatever the game throws at them. Enemies are designed around limitations of certain weapons, which are meant to incentivize players to experiment. After players get comfortable with their weapons and which enemies to use them on, the game turns into a blank canvas of player expression. Instead of simply beating a boss or using the best weapon to conquer a challenge, you become the boss and do whatever the hell you want. RE4, while not having a skill ceiling, emulates this action game feeling as players gain more confidence in their quote-unquote mastery of the mechanics. Leon being able to kick mobs of enemies, cavalierly lobbing grenades, making funny one-liners throughout the story, and your seemingly infinite ammo supply make it borderline impossible to be scared in this game. With the exclusion of Salazar's guard and the regenerators, this game has absolutely no atmosphere and in the rare moments it does, you can probably kick or suplex the fear away. Sure, this game might be scary for children or people who don't like horror games, but there's almost nothing remotely frightening, unsettling, or terrifying about this game. In my opinion, there's a clash between the haunting atmosphere the game sometimes wants to have with the overall campy action tone of the game. Speaking of action games, RE4, even in 2005, was a mediocre action game. Now, just to be clear, mediocre doesn't mean bad. A mediocre is like a 5 in my opinion. It's not bad, and it's not good, it's like somewhere in between. As I said earlier, the RE games were gradually becoming more and more action focused with the introduction of more ammo and a new evasion mechanic. RE4's gameplay additions made it the series' most realized action game at the time, which worked on a fundamental level. However, the devil's in the details here, so let's start with the bosses. While RE4's bosses were a much needed improvement over its predecessors, QTs for them are kind of a mixed bag. These prompts don't always show up when it's time to dodge an attack. When they don't appear, you just take damage because you're anticipating a QTE that never appears. I'm fine with QTEs and bosses, but why are some of them just occasionally random? There were countless times where I just waited for a prompt and was just hit instead. After making this mistake throughout the game, I just started running away from attacks since it was more reliable than waiting for a QTE that may never appear. The other action game sin this game commits are with the enemies. The overwhelming majority of enemies in RE4 will slowly approach and attack you throughout the entire game. Sure, you'll meet a handful of new enemies that are great, but most of them will be the same enemies you've been fighting, now featuring armor, helmets, and the occasional weapon. The lack of enemy variety means strategies you've used in the first level will help you in the final level. With the exception of bosses, some of the enemies in the castle and the regenerators, there isn't enough enemy varieties to support this game's lengthy runtime. I always find myself exhausted playing this game after spending an hour in the castle. By the time I'm here, I'm just bored out of my mind from fighting mobs, shooting the same enemies in the near face, and just going through the motions. RE4's combat doesn't have any mechanics to master, and the enemies, for like 90% of the game, aren't engaged engaging enough to justify its 15 hour runtime. Resident Evil runtime has been a topic of debate since the series' inception. Some critics believe the game should be longer, while fans believe the game's lengths are fine because they have a lot of unlockables, an interesting ranking system, and even more replay value. I agree with the fans about the replay value, but Capcom listened to the critics by making this game much longer than its predecessors. I'm sure there are some fans that enjoy this game's runtime, and that's great, but this game, in my opinion, is way too long. I vividly remember reaching the castle on my first run and uninstalling the game because I was so exhausted from just the boring gameplay loop. I eventually reinstalled the game and powered through it because the story was getting interesting at that point, but playing the game felt like a chore. Salazar's castle might be the worst part of the game for me because it drags all on and on and on for several hours. Sure, the story starts to get interesting when Luis wants to help us, when we meet Ada and play as Ashley, but this castle is just so long. Since we're talking about levels, let's quickly touch on RE4's level design before talking about the remake. Now, I've spoken at length about the importance of level design in my RE1 and 2 videos, so feel free to check those out if you're curious. The TLDR, or is it TLDW, is that levels were designed for players to think about how to traverse them, use resources to create safe routes, unlock doors for easy exploration and carefully 
play save points. This intricate level design was entirely dropped for RE4's mostly linear stages or battle arenas. RE4's level design isn't necessarily bad, but they're much less involved when compared to its predecessors. The development team must have realized the old school level design wouldn't synergize well with RE4's more action focused direction. This is probably why most levels were linear corridors or giant arenas in this game. We're supposed to run around, climb ladders, be swarmed by mobs, and kick enemies off of bridges. Additionally, these levels needed to house side quests and extra items for players to find. Some levels are somewhat interesting, but a majority of them are just these linear corridors or have some obnoxious gimmick causing the game to drag. To be clear, I don't think this game's level design is necessarily bad. I think it's important to discuss level design here because up until RE4, RE's level design was an incredible accomplishment. I'll probably always feel mixed on the level design though. I'm aware of the clear bias I have towards the original trilogy, but I'm also aware that I've never been critical of other action games level design. I guess RE4's level design is fine, and it would, undeniably, be worse if it had classic RE level design. RE4's combat would have felt awful in the Spencer Mansion or the police station, so we're probably fine here. Anyways, let's quickly touch on the remake and wrap up this video. Honestly, I think the remake is the definitive way to play RE4. This game has a somewhat haunting atmosphere. It connects to the remakes for 2 and 3, makes the story more engaging through rewriting certain characters. They castle is more tolerable, the core combat has been streamlined by modern gaming standards, and they added a parry which only makes action games better. While these improvements significantly enhance the original's foundation, a lot of the issues pertaining to the enemy's design and combat, even with the parry, persist. I don't fundamentally enjoy RE4, so hoping a remake that obviously shares its DNA with the original would change my opinion is pretty dumb, and that's really all I have to say on the remake. Similar to the original, I uninstalled this game after reaching the castle and reinstalled it for this video because it's idiotic to have an opinion on something that you haven't played unless it's a Ubisoft game. Before ending this video, I want to make something abundantly clear. Resident Evil 4 is a very important game to the gaming medium. This game has inspired countless action games since it was released, and we can still feel its lasting impact almost 20 years later. RE4 embodies the term innovative for all it brought to the medium. QTEs, the over-the-shoulder camera, aiming, and more mechanics probably wouldn't have been introduced in 2005 without this game. If we were to remove this game from history, the action game landscape would look undeniably different. This game also highlights the importance of creatives taking risks, so I'm planning on making a video about the current remaster and remake culture in the future, so I won't go too much into detail now, but RE4 encapsulates the importance of creatives being able to experiment. As of writing this essay in 2024, AAA video games budgets have exploded, studios are likely to be closed after releasing a single bad game, and publishers are very risk averse. Sure, RE4 was released at a time where games were cheaper and had shorter development cycles, but publishers at the time provided more financial support to creatives and had less invasive monetization practices. When Capcom's back was against the wall, they bet on their development team and they delivered one of the most important games in the industry. The result was a passionate team who sought out to redefine Resident Evil and save the franchise by breathing new life into it. They developed a game addressing their original trilogy shortcomings, pioneered several revolutionary mechanics, and introduced millions of new fans to the world of Resident Evil. And despite all of this, I'm just not a fan of this game. RE4 is seen by many, and myself to an extent, as a step forward for the franchise, but more of me feels like this is a sidestep rather than a step forward or a step back. For the drastic departure in gameplay and being directly responsible for RE5 and 6, I'm very divided on this game. I think too much of the series' DNA was lost and not meaningfully replaced, resulting in a game resembling Resident Evil only by name and characters. In the beginning of this video, I said I didn't want to call this game bad because it wasn't the original trilogy. Hopefully I was able to articulate my reservations with the system instead of complaining that this game was bad because it's different. I think a deep dive into RE4's systems and why I don't like them might have been the best way to go about this, but I'm excited to read the comments for this video because I know this is probably going to be a controversial video. Regardless, it's important to critique pieces of art for what they are instead of complaining about them not fitting your preferences. And holistic Realistically speaking, I think the new mechanics are just a mixed bag. At the end of the day, I'm clearly in the minority with this one though. It seems like everyone loves this game and I'm the odd one out, but I don't really care to be honest. We all have our opinions and that's what makes this interesting. If everyone loves this game and I'm the only one who doesn't, that's perfectly fine. But if someone were to ask me for a Resident Evil recommendation, my first option certainly won't be Resident Evil 4.
All right, I'm gonna keep this outro pretty pretty short because uh, I don't know if you guys can hear, but I'm feeling kind of under the weather right now. Uh, so thank God I recorded the commentary a few days ago. First and foremost, thanks so much for watching and hopefully you guys enjoyed a probably pretty original take on RE4. Wasn't a huge fan of this game, but I respect it at the same time. So I'm just kind of somewhere in the middle. Um, anyways, we're celebrating Halloween in November. Weird time I know. I'm working on another survival horror video that I'd like to get out. And I've obviously been gone for the past couple of weeks because I've been in Japan. I've posted pictures in the Discord and on Twitter and a little bit in the YouTube uh, channel community tab. Yeah, so we're officially back. Videos are going to keep on coming out at a good pace. And shout out to my channel members and Twitch subscribers for supporting my creative endeavors. Appreciate y'all a lot. So thank you so much for all the support. You know, if you guys like what I do here and if I didn't piss anyone off too much, consider becoming a channel member where I can provide you guys emotes and access to videos early, outline scripts, and some Discord perks that are pretty nice to have. A couple of questions uh, before I get out of here. So which Resident Evil game is your guys' favorite? Are you a fan of the original trilogy? Are you somebody who likes 4, 5, and 6? Are you somebody who likes the modern games like I do? What do you guys think of RE4? What are your favorites? Did the remake fix everything or live up to your expectations? Did it surpass? the original in your opinion and if you played re4 at launch what was that like i'm super curious to keep this conversation going down in the comments below and would you like me to cover re7 and 8 and don't worry i actually really like those games so uh yeah looking forward to that if we get there but thanks for watching feel free to join the discord follow me on twitter keep an eye on the community tab and hopefully you enjoy the video and i'll see everybody very soon